the holler and let us brother Donnie come to Homestead Preacher. Ten minutes in the Word, 1 6 2021. Praise the Lord, we made it to another day. Welcome aboard. Come on in. You'll notice this is a premiere here. That's because I'm my internet signal out in the field working is pretty weak in the area I'm working in, so I'm gonna put this up early. Thank you for being with us. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Galatians chapter number five. Galatians chapter five. And boy, Paul is we're right in the middle of him going through here explaining to us about the law versus grace and it is power packed with thick doctrine and doctrine that we can really chew on so before we get started let's go to the lord in prayer father we thank you for this day that you've given us lord we pray that you'll touch all the folks that's got the covid and got the flu and uh, people's having relationship problems and lord we ask today that you'll open the scripture for our understanding in jesus name amen so I'm trying to talk a little bit quieter. I'm doing it about 5 o'clock uh, this morning for the rest of the family who uh, woke up. So I hope you can hear me okay. But uh, if you have your Bibles, take a turn to the book of Galatians, chapter number 5. And we left off somewhere around verse number uh, 5 of uh, 5.5. Five. And we are, Paul is again comparing um, the law, the bondage to the law versus freedom in Jesus Christ. And notice, if you will, verse number five. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. Let me read that again. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. And that's that's kind of reminiscent of Romans 8, 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that's to be revealed to us. You know, uh, we as our standing in Jesus Christ, we have been made perfect by his righteousness. But that, um, that righteousness, that sanctification, that salvation will be fully revealed. And that's why he says, for through spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait. And I hope today that in these times, and as bad as it is, I do pray that you are eagerly waiting for that righteousness to be revealed. And he's talking about when we go into glory. Uh, because, you know, we are, we are saved. We are walking saved. We will die saved, and that salvation will be revealed in future times in glory. That's exactly what he's saying. Verse number six says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith uh, working through love. Now, Paul was not saying anything negative about what you and I would call or know as the medical act of circumcision. Paul, of course, is basing that uh, on the Judaizers requiring circumcision as the Old Testament did. And Paul said, look, that's nothing. Circumcision, uncircumcision. What really counts is that faith, true faith in Jesus Christ uh, works through the love of Jesus Christ and works through our love, meaning that once we are saved, the love of Christ takes and surrounds us. It invades us, and that love will go out to others. And then he says here uh, in verse number seven, you were running well. You know, Paul loves to take people's lives and compare it to a, a race, and he does it a number of times in the scriptures. And here he does it with these. He says, you were running well. Who hindered you? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Isn't this something? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. So understand this in your mind, folks. So he has gone from talking about freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ as opposed to the yoke of the bondage of the law 
and they had uh, some of them had believed the gospel in the church maybe a bunch of them had believed the gospel then these Judaizers came in and they brought in their poison if you will and some of them started to uh, hinder the church at Galatia and some of the church at Galatia was following them so again he says who hindered you from obeying the truth this persuasion is not from him who calls you now I don't know if you notice the magnitude of the statement that Paul gives here who hindered you from obeying the truth now uh, any salvation that comes for anybody no matter when they get saved ultimately people are saved because they obey the truth and Paul accuses these Judaizers here of hindering these people uh, they, the Judaizers had hindered they had persuaded these people from obeying the truth and then he says a very interesting statement a little leaven leavens the whole lump a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, we know what leaven is. Leaven is a, um, it's, it, it's what is put in bread to, to make it, uh, to, to make it uh, rise. It's a common, uh, um, it, it's, it's talking about the, the yeast in dough. When my wife makes uh, bread, um, she'll put yeast in there and it causes it to rise. And, the point is that a little bit of this agent um, causes a stir. So he's saying a little bit of leaven, uh, a little bit of leaven leavens the whole lumps. And he's talking about sin. And a little bit of falsehood, a little bit of error, um, a little bit of wrong thinking, uh, a little bit of... Um, of taking a word out of context, uh, a scripture out of context, that has a potential to mess up a whole bunch of stuff. And folks, I'm going to tell you, that's exactly what's happened today in our times today. Think about it for a moment. Think about um, all the differences that uh, exist amongst God's people. Now, you got to figure, it started with Jesus Christ his apostles, the church came, and that started the Christian fellowship as one. Then something between then and now, something's come in and caused mass division. Because you can't tell me if you've got 14 different denominations uh, and they all claim to have the same truth, although their truth has variance, Leaven has got somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Something's gone on. Now that's just one example. Uh, in our own personal lives, think about how as we walk with the Lord, and I tell my kids, and uh, uh, they'll they'll um, there may be a, a program that comes even on YouTube, and the program may have just a, a little bad language, and I tell my kids all the time, I say, how much poison would have to be in a cup of juice in order for you not to drink it. And of course they're going to say, well, I wouldn't drink it with any poison. A little leaven leavens a whole, a whole lot. And in our own lives, when we let a little bit get in, or we get a little false thinking in, or we let, a, we, we let our minds wander, it has a potential for great damage. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. And it's interesting that Paul, he's making the, the case here that some of those in Galatia who thought they were, had faith in Christ have now been able to be misled and, and in truth did not have faith at all. And he says, I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view than mine. And the one who is troubling, troubling you will bear the penalty whoever he is. Boy, that is a stark statement. Whoever is troubling you we're, will bear the penalty. So let, let's remember, let's remind ourselves, what's that penalty? 
hold on just a second here let's go back over here to uh, verse number uh, excuse me Galatians chapter 1 and Paul said in verse number 9 uh, so I say uh, I, as we said before in verse 9 of chapter 1 so now I say again if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received let him be accursed boy I tell you there were heavy penalties for those who preach and practice wrong gospel. And I pray that today this word has lifted you up. Thank you for joining me. And if you do think this could be a blessing to somebody, send it to them. You continue to study, ask any questions you have. And until tomorrow, this is Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher, bidding you a great day indeed in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.